Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Brian Pluccino. I'm the Assistant Director for Facilities and Student Retention in Residential Life. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. My name is Jamie Timothy. I'm the Assistant Director for Operations and Communications for Residential Life. And so what we're planning on doing is we're going to give you a little bit of a taste of some of the parts and pieces of housing, residential life, residential living. We're going to cover applications, housing options, some of the meal plan discrepancies, things to know about that moving forward. Um, we're going to kind of treat this for you as if you are really engaged in wanting to live on campus here at Stockton University. Um, and so as we go through, obviously, if you have any questions, you know where to put those. Uh, we'll do our best to answer as many as possible when it's time for that. And um, other than that, uh, James, if you're ready, we'll, uh, I'll go ahead and share my screen and we'll get going, all right? So first and foremost, welcome to Stockton. Uh, we'd like to start off with our nice picture here of our brand new uh, space and facility, our Atlantic City campus. We'll talk a little bit about that later. Uh, well, the big thing is that we are we're excited to kind of give you all the options we can for your first year living on campus. Uh, for any students, whether you are coming in as a freshman or you're transferring in, we're excited to give you that experience about what it means to actually engage in a community and really live in the space that you're staying at while you're away at college. Um, our university, we offer a whole slew of options, you know, when it comes to freshman living, um, especially compared to some other universities. Um, one, of, one of the aspects that we try to really engage is that in all of our residence halls, you will have RAs who are resident assistants, they're student leaders. They are available and active in your floors or in your communities. They're able to assist you with just questions about living on campus, resources, getting around but also kind of help you really make connections with other members in your community or other locations, groups, organizations on campus. Um, above the RAs, we also have complex directors who are full-time professional staff. They are ready and available in all housing areas. So it's one of those ideas is that if you ever need that support, you can just know that you do have other members that are there and available who are overseeing any of our housing areas that we offer. All right. so. Starting off, residence halls and apartments. So we have a couple different offerings for our incoming students that are freshmen. Now we have those traditional, and it's a, you know it's kind of a scary word to say in the housing and residential life uh, world. Um, I call them dorms um, because that's what a lot of you actually know them as. Uh, they are called residence halls, but think dorms when we say housing two and three. Housing two, we have singles, doubles, and triples. Now in the singles, very simply put, it is you yourself in your own space. If you're in a double, it's you and one additional roommate. And if you're in a triple, there's two students on, that are on the floor, AKA their bed is the only bed there. The triple person would be on the top of a bunk bed. That is the triple. Um, singles are, are a little more expensive than doubles. Doubles are a little more expensive than triples. In housing three, we have doubles and small doubles. Now the small double, it's a little bit smaller than the double, but also a great value at the price point that we're able to keep it at. So for those of you who are trying to consider that dorm style housing, but want to be conscientious with the uh, affordability aspect of all this. In housing one, we have our five person shared apartments. In Atlantic City, we have four person shared and four person private. Now you're a different kind of freshman than we had, say, you know, a few years ago when I went to Stockton in 2004. Back then we were all in the dorms. Now we're in a position where uh, you want a little bit of something different. So some of you might want that apartment style living a little more independent, but will still provide you with that same freshman experience through our resident assistants, our complex directors, and our programming models. In housing one and the five person shared, think of it this way. It's like having a double and a triple. Those are the bedrooms. You come out, you have access to a full kitchen with gas stove and oven, a dining area, a living room, and one bathroom you share for five people. In Atlantic City, there's a four person shared, which is two people per bedroom two bedrooms, two full baths off the bedrooms, kitchen, dining area, and living room. In the four-person private, that's where we get real fancy for you. We have four bedrooms in that one apartment with two full bath, kitchen, living room, dining area, okay? Now, in that, there's a couple things to note about those four different options. Housing two and three are located on the academic side of Lake Fred. If you don't know who that is, you'll get to learn about him when you get here. And housing one is on the other side, the opposite side of the lake. And the Atlantic City uh, Residence Hall is, you guessed it, in Atlantic City. So, um, 
before we start talking directly about meal plans, I'm going to grab some of these uh, questions coming through. Um, with our air conditioning in our residence halls, that there is a temperature set um, in the apartments. Uh, every apartment comes with a thermostat in their housing location. Since we're able to adjust that within an average range year round, we ensure that we, you know, provide a standard ambient temperature in all of our residence halls um, and our housing apartments. But in the apartments, students will be able to readily adjust it. In the residence halls, which is like housing two or three, the temperatures are set across several rooms. So it doesn't provide the direct adjustment, but the temperatures are provided to be at a standard ambient temperature kind of year round. Now, I will note in the fall and the spring when the temperature kind of goes up and down, some students do experience like heat kicking on when it gets colder outside and then air conditioning kicking on when it's you know, warm during the day. So it's just one of those things that, you know, we do find that most students are very, very content with the temperatures that their rooms are at. But we, uh, we always check just in case students have questions and want us to look at check it out. Um, I got another note that if you have already submitted your housing preferences, we'll talk about that a little later. But if you're looking to change them, you'll just want to email us and we'll cover that a little more at the end. And then that last um, one I saw we have here, James, is if they want to live in Atlantic City, can they and take classes in main campus? Absolutely. Yeah. Take classes in Galloway and live in AC. If you want to take classes in AC, live in Galloway. If you want to live in Galloway, wherever you want to take classes, you take classes. Wherever you want to live, you live. No big deal, no mm -hmm. no fuss. We, uh, our campus partners over at SASE, make sure we have a shuttle system that goes between Atlantic City and Galloway. It's two charter buses that we contract with, so you're riding in style. You'll be able to sit there and not have to worry about driving back and forth. Um, so you'll be able to take that. We have shuttle times, we have apps. Anything you can imagine, we'll be able to uh, you know, have you all set up on that. And then the, the last question we'll take for now before we move on to the next slide is, are there other housing options in Atlantic City not included in the housing plan? There are other housing options in Atlantic City. However, those are reserved for upperclassmen. As an incoming freshman, you have the choice of a four-person shared or a four-person private. And we'll look into uh, we'll look into those next questions after the next slide. We'll keep it flowing like that, all right? So, uh, James, I bid you to the next slide. Perfect. So, as Brian noted, like with our different housing styles, there are some factors of meal plan. Um, in housing two and three, because the floors do not have kitchens themselves, students are required to have meal plans living in housing two and three. Uh, for your first semester in the fall, you have the option to choose between two weekly options. There's the 14 meal plan weekly and the 19 meal plan weekly. And how these work is that starting from Sunday to Saturday, you'll be able to use either 14 meals across the week or 19 meals across the week. We find that this, this way students kind of get into the habit and find their routines. And we find that students actually in the first semester when everything else about adjusting to college is going on, the one thing they don't have to worry about is make sure they can eat during the day. So when you think about meal plans, we also want to note that we do have lots of places that students can use them at. Now, not to forget about our students that want to opt into living in apartments. The apartments do come with full kitchens that they're able to use. So the note there is that you can still have a meal plan or you don't have to have a meal plan or you can choose from one of the other meal plan types. So having a kitchen, we understand that some students are going to be looking to come in. You know, they might be really, really comfortable with ramen noodles or five star chefs already, but at least having the kitchen provides them that option. But for anyone who wants to have a meal plan, you know, Stockton Dining does offer locations. We have our dining hall in N Wing on campus in the academic spine. We also have lots of locations looking in the Galloway campus, whether they're in the academic area or they're right in the campus center. In our Chris Gow property, we also have Purdy's Galloway Grill. And then in Atlantic City campus, we have options right in the Atlantic City academic building. So the note is that really wherever students want to go, we want to make sure that there's ways that they can use their meal plan. Um, I took one note of something that just popped up um, as far as uh, dining options and let's say for uh, different food allergies or different, uh, you know, dietary restrictions. Um, there are different housing options anywhere you go. I do highly recommend reaching out to dining services. Chartwells is who we use on campus because they will work around nearly any type of, you know, food allergy or dining option that your student might need. Um, the one I wanted to add as well for meal plans, um, when you go to select those meal plans to use all these different dining options, um, make sure you're paying attention to the website as meal plan options can change because while currently in housing two and three as an incoming freshman, you are required to have the 14 or the 19 weekly plan, uh, there is the propensity that those, those options can change. So just make sure you stay up to date with all the information right on the Residential Life website for that. If you're in Atlantic City or in Housing One, you are not required to have a meal plan in either of those areas, but you are allowed 
to get a meal plan for either of those areas. So the next part is how to get started and find the application. So when you go to the Stockton website and you go click the little go icon at the top right hand corner of your web browser, it brings you to the area where it says, as you can see the arrow, the Google Stockton portal login. On there you can click log into the Google Stockton portal and in there you can use the credentials you provided upon your acceptance to Stockton University. You'll set all that up, you'll be able to go right in there and then you'll be able to click into the academic year 2021 residential application after you click on student life tab on the top. Once you're in there, you'll be able to put in your information, so on and so forth. And as you can see here, there's a couple different steps that you have to complete. There's all the way from beginning application through the meal plan preference. Uh, first thing you'd have to do when you start the application is you'll have to sign and choose a nine or 12 month contract. Now that's the difference between if you're going to be living with us from September all the way through May, or if you're gonna be looking to be in a position where you'll be living with us over the summertime as well. There's a couple of different reasons you do that. We can talk about that a little bit later. You'll have to sign the housing contract. You'll read through the contract that you'd be agreeing to. Very similar to if you were to live, you know, if your family rents, or if you've ever seen talk to someone who's renting an apartment, we have certain rules and restrictions that you have to abide by. You'd sign that digitally, and then you'd be brought to the opportunity to fill out the housing deposit. Now, that deposit is $150 for you to secure your spot in housing. This is different than the accepted student's deposit that you will pay for your admission to the institution. So there are two different deposits. Now that $150 that you will pay the deposit for will be applied to your housing bill for that fall semester once you actually come here and live here. However, to make sure you secure that, make sure you pay the housing deposit. Okay, another part to that, you have to provide an emergency contact. Listen, we'd love to never have to use that. However, you know, things do happen. We wanna make sure we can make sure in those situations that you are as safe as possible. So make sure you provide that emergency contact and please make sure that the phone number you provide us is a good working and active number. A little note as well, we highly encourage you to set up your voicemail inboxes. If we need to reach you or your family or your emergency contact person, and it says the mailbox has not been set up, really puts us in a situation where we really can't leave the important details to get to you or your emergency contact. The next part you'll do is you'll create a personal profile. Okay, now on this, you'll be able to answer a subset of questions that are gonna help us to shape some of the people you might live with. Um, now, if you know people you wanna live with, hey, that's James and I's preference, right? We'd love to be in a position where you know everyone if you really wanna live with them because you choose them. However, not everyone does and that's okay. That's what this personal profile is for. What you'll be doing in that is you'll be answering a, subs a subsequent amount of questions that will shape a little bit about what we know about you, such as, are you an early bird? Are you a late night owl? What is your level of cleanliness? Are you, everything is right in its place? Or do you like to let it go a little bit? Of course, within the reasons that we allow you to in your residential space. These kind of questions, do you, do you have these different interests? They help us to form a profile that then an algorithm will match you with someone as close as possible to you from your fellow freshman class. Now, if you're in a single, obviously you're in a position then where you'll be living with yourself if that's what you do get assigned from your preferences. We don't anticipate you'll have too many roommate conflicts that way. If you double, a triple, a quad, or a five person apartment, you're gonna have one to four additional roommates. So that's why answering these earnestly and honestly about who you are, not the perfect roommate you wish to have, and not necessarily who you want to become, be realistic with when you're answering these questions so we can make sure to get you the best possible match. Now, you've done all that, wonderful, great. If there are some people that you meet at orientation, admissions puts a heck of a show on, lets you come in here and as long as we're able to have them, you get to really get to meet people and talk to people when you have open houses, things like that. And if you have not gotten your housing assignment yet by those instances, or if you're in some of these Facebook groups, or if you know someone who's coming here, you can search for roommates who have done, signed a contract, and paid a deposit. 
And then you'll be able to check your application status as well. You'll be able to see where you're at. Now you see in this example we have here, uh, James Timothy here, he signed his application at 4 7 at 11.05 a.m. Good job, James. Well, get done this morning. <laughs> James, you didn't pay your deposit, so guess what? You're not a fully completed application right there. So, Brian, thank you for pointing that out because it's part of the reason why I want to make sure I show this application status page. Uh, for those of you joining us, if you look at the image that we put here, you'll notice that I signed the contract today. The bubble for my deposit is still unchecked. I just have to note that this page does not have anything modifiable, so that bubble is always going to stay open like that. Don't stress it. The reason I want to show you this page is that this is the application status link. So above all the page numbers, you know, from begin application through meal plan preferences, that link will always stay there. On this link, you'll be able to see when your deposit has been applied to your account. When you submit that deposit, we do note that can, it can take two to three business days for it to appear on your account because it still is a manual process. Don't worry about it. If you know you paid your deposit and you have the receipt and you don't see it after a few days, definitely reach out to our office and we'll definitely make sure to see what's going on with that. Um, I will note, uh, just kind of addressing a couple of questions attached in here, is that uh, for your housing preferences, um, if you have submitted your housing preferences and you would like to change them, Brian did answer that question by saying send an email to housing at Stockton.edu. That is our main housing inbox. I do like to include a note on that. Please make sure that your student is sending it, you or your student are sending it from your Stockton email account, which is the go.stockton.edu email account. And it's also helpful if your student includes their Z number. We want to make sure that we can find your student and your information as accurately as possible. So definitely any help with including your Z number and using your stock and email account, it just helps us expedite the process. So, uh, go ahead, James, you wanna talk about this a little bit? Yeah, so um, some of the questions coming in are actually about due dates for applications, you know, when did they find out about roommates? So this is perfect timing. So right now our priority deadline is still set for June 1st. Uh, this is actually pushed back compared to past years when it used to be May. So we're hoping that this little bit extra time is, you know, helpful, you know, especially during this time, you know, year, what we're dealing with, with everything going on around us, to provide students a little more time to make plans and decisions. If you are dedicated to Stockton, we will always recommend log in and sign that housing contract as soon as possible. Because the earlier you do it, it increases the chances you're more likely to get your housing preference of choice. However, we have to note that we can't always guarantee your top choice. Um, housing assignments are done based on a very complicated algorithm, but what it does look at, it does look at confirmed roommates. So that's something important to note. When you are searching for a roommate, they, you have to make sure that your friend, whoever it is, does have a completed housing application as well. Um, several times over the summer, we get requests from students and they're trying to find somebody who has not applied to the university yet. So because of that, you won't be able to find them. But we do recommend if you have a friend that you're coming in with and you know you want to live with them or you met somebody at orientation or somebody, you know, definitely interested in one of the class Facebook pages that are started already, you can definitely search for them by name or Z number is sometimes the fastest way to find them. When you request somebody, they'll log into the Go portal also and confirm that request. This tells our office that both people are interested in living with each other. So please make sure that if you put out a friend request there, you want to make sure that that roommate is responding to it as well. Same thing goes for you. If you have a roommate that reached out to you to live with them, it's best to make sure that you log into your Go portal and confirm that as well. So right now our tentative plan is that for the orientation schedule in July, we will make sure that assignments are available on the day of your orientation as long as students have completed a housing application by the June 1st deadline. So to complete the housing application, we do want, once again, the signature and the housing deposit, as well as for students to complete the field of the housing application, which includes emergency contact, personal preferences, and housing preferences. We will always try our best to make sure that students get their preferred roommate whenever possible. Same thing, we will try to work through the preferred housing options as best as we can. All students are able to put in five types of housing options when they complete the application. And we do advise all students to take it an earnest and honest thought about what they would like to choose all the way from one to five. Always what will happen for assignments is it will look at, you know, how our first option can get placed. And if not, it will go to your second option, third option, and so on. There are some cases, depending if students apply a little later, depending on about guaranteeing roommates, kind of lots of factors in there. One of the questions asked is that are you, you know, what if you get something different? 
if all the housing options have been taken, you know, within your student's top choices, at that time that your assignment is made, you will be assigned to the next available space. But we do always try to work with all the students' preferences, especially for anyone that gets their applications in before the June 1st priority date. Um, when it comes to your day of orientation, um, as long as, you know, we're moving forward with the same dates or, you know, if we're, if we're doing an in-person, we're allowed to in July, or there'll be a virtual one at that time, we'll make sure that you'll be able to log into your housing application again, and on that application status page, you'll be able to see what your housing assignment is, as well as any roommates, if you're in a space that has roommates. Um, in, in addition to add to that part, for assignments uh, that will be provided to you, this will largely be based on your preferences. Now, James talked a little bit about that algorithm. And so to give you an idea of how that's gonna work, one, we do prioritize uh, roommates over housing. What does this mean? If James and I wanna to live together and we both put that a housing two double is our first choice, but we also wanna to live together. And let's say every one of you selected housing two doubles, well, there is a chance we're gonna be disappointed and not get our first choice. That's what we ask you to fill out, five choices. Make sure you take into consideration that maybe everybody wants one of your top choices and you have to have a backup plan. Now, if there's only single spaces in some of those doubles, the software will help us to put James and myself in a double space somewhere else. It might be in housing one, if that's our second or third choice. It might be in housing three. Whatever the case may be, we do our absolute best, absolute best to make sure that roommates are put together. We want to make sure that we have people that already want to live together together so that you can help ease your experience and transition into housing. Part of those preferences as well goes back to where I wanted to expand a little bit on the different housing options. Now, if you're in housing two and three, we had mentioned that it would be a single space which in the singles, it is just you alone, okay, in your specific room. Now, each floor of housing two and three has approximately 20 students living on the floor, okay? Those 20 students will share the same bathroom. In that bathroom, there are three to four shower stalls and three uh, toilet stalls and three vanities, okay? In addition to that, there's a common lounge space. For housing two and three, we have laundry. In housing two, there's one large laundry facility for housing two to go to. Multiple washers, multiple dryers to help service that whole area. In housing three, we also have one bathroom for the whole floor to share, and we have the common lounge. The one difference between two and three is that while we have that big, large laundry facility for the, all of housing two, in housing three, each floor has one single washer and one single dryer for each floor in each building. They work out to about the same amount of students per washer dryer that way. It's just a little bit difference of where your laundry would actually be located, okay? Now, part of that as well is that in housing two and three, our partners over at plant management do clean the bathrooms Monday through Friday during a designated time, which is very clearly posted outside of your bathroom if you're in housing two or three. In housing one, Atlantic City four-person shared and Atlantic City four-person private, that bathroom would be cleaned by you and your roommates. Now, you're only sharing that bathroom with a couple of your residents, so it is on you. You do not have cleaning services coming to your individual private apartment. Just wanted to give some of that I know we had a couple questions, people asking about um, some laundry stuff and things like that. If you're in housing one, there is one large laundry facility similarly to housing two. And in Atlantic City, each floor of the building has its own laundry floor as well. Okay. All right. So we have a little bit of a setup here for the year ahead. And James and I'll take turns going through this. This might be a little bit hard to read depending on the size of your screen. So we've brought it out a little bit so that we'll be able to go through it. Uh, James, if you don't mind, I'll start the year ahead and we'll have you follow me after, right? Definitely. So in August, boy, oh boy, August is a special time. You'll be reviewing your financial aid. You're gonna be starting, I know someone had mentioned about looking for on-campus jobs. That's when you can start to email some offices on campus, especially if you do get work study. 
That's a huge, huge thing for you to be able to get some kind of job on campus. Um, you'll be starting to prepare for moving. Now, James and I can both tell you, uh, it's the time where you start to get a little nervous, okay? You're also excited, you're contacting your roommates, you're seeing who's bringing what, um, and the freshmen move into the residence halls. Now, part of that experience in August, now this year, that might change slightly because of the way the calendar shakes out. So you might move in right at the beginning of September, but I assure you that James and I will be prepping your space towards the end of August to make sure it's all ready for you to move in. Now, part of that moving in, prepping to move in and stuff is when you're packing, there's three key things you have to remember. One, do not bring a U-Haul truck size worth of belongings. Whether you're in the single, the double, the triple, the small double, or an apartment, you will not have enough space for a U-Haul's worth of stuff. What we like to suggest is this. If you go to Residential Life's website, we have a suggested packing list for you. This also lets you know some of the things you cannot bring. And that brings us to guidance number two. In that, if you are in housing two or three, you cannot bring anything that is some kind of hot cooking apparatus. You can't bring anything that's hot to touch in any of our housing areas. So if you wanna bring a coffee pot, unfortunately, the only option you have is, and that's not saying Keurig is the only brand, but that style of pod coffee making that is not hot to touch. You cannot bring heat lamps for animals. In fact, the only animals you're allowed to have on campus are if you have a fish, that is in a 10 gallon or less tank. Or if you go through the process of, with learning access program for any kind of service animals you may have. That aside, we do not permit pets. One of the other things to consider, no rope lights, string lights of any sort. If it's on a string and it's light up, you cannot bring it, okay? That we have to follow very strict guidelines in our housing as given to us by the New Jersey uh, fire inspector. And so we have to make sure that we're abiding by those fire and safety protocols. Okay. And you can find out more about the things you can and cannot bring from those lists that James maintains right on the website. Okay. In September, the upperclassmen move in, you meet new people, classes begin, you start to join clubs. I know someone had asked, are we up, do we have clubs and organizations in Greek life? Yes, we do. Hundreds of them. You have to come check it out. Uh, we have welcome week activities. We put on a great first week there for you. And then we feed right into the annual day of service. Okay, and that's a great time for you to come in. Freshmen come in, you can volunteer with each other, learn about some of the clubs and orgs that are there, both volunteering and running some of the programs. Then we hit October. Now, this is where sometimes you might find yourself starting to have some roommate conflicts. That's okay. Don't feel like there's something wrong with you. Um, if you start to have a conflict, you're living in a new space. And even if you knew the person prior to that, this is not only is it new for you to live with that person potentially, but you also have things like 16 hours a week of class. You're doing a lot of self-learning on your own. The papers are a little bit different. Studying changes up a little bit different. And so you might find yourself starting to have some roommate conflicts. That's okay. That's why we're here. We're here to make sure that our James and myself and the rest of our management team will work with you to get through some of that. We know it's gonna happen once in a while and that's why we're here to support you in those endeavors. Um, we have Multicultural Month, which is an awesome time where you'll be able to really sink your teeth into a lot of different aspects of looking at why being multicultural is such a blessing for us to be pursuing. We have midterm exams start to come up. You might start to feel a little homesick, but again, we're here for you on that as well. And you actually will be able to see the career and internship fair in some cases in this time. Now, some of these might change with ebb and flow, especially given the current situation right now. But as things are coming up, our campus partners do a phenomenal job at making sure that they're advertising these events. The big thing for you is you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you are checking your Stockton email, okay? That is your bread and butter to go to anytime you want some more information about what's going on. We also have university weekend that comes up now that might change a little bit of timing and date too but generally speaking it's around that time and when you have that that's a great time for you to get a little bit of those homesick blues as well so as we enter the month of november 
we start to see some students start to receive their midterm scores back. Now, for, this might be a surprise for some students, or it might be just as they expected. So the big note with November is as you roll into that, it's a great time for students to assess to make sure that their study habits are good, to make sure that they're gearing up for the upcoming finals as well. Um, students also, when November hits, will start to think about next spring. So spring 2021 will be here before you know it. And a big side of that is make sure you start working towards class registration. You'll be able to work with your academic advisors or your preceptors. Preceptors are assigned to you when you're here on campus as advisors, sometimes within your major or if you're undeclared, sometimes outside your major um, once you, until you get one. But this, is the, this system is in place to help students try to figure out what they want to do and how they can pursue their academics in the upcoming semester. Uh, we also have our student development puts on their day of leadership, which one thing that Stockton prides itself on is that we have fantastic involvement in the community. And we see a huge turnout from our residential students in this. So we definitely recommend is that if you're looking for something to actually increase your involvement, the day of leadership is amazing. We also have found that some students, you know, maybe by November, you still haven't really found your niche or where to join in with, you know, you might go at the day of leadership and you actually might join around with some other students in clubs and organizations you didn't even know existed on campus. So it's a really great opportunity for you to get involved and see what else is out there. And then of course, Thanksgiving break, you know, it's a few days off, students get to go home, you know, relax, and you know, you're geared up for when December comes. December, you know, finals are there and that's okay. This, our office will make sure that we have lots of, you know, opportunities and events for you to know that you can de-stress, um, we'll make sure to provide information on when and how, you know, there might be uh, our late night breakfast event, which is a great opportunity for students to, <clears throat> excuse me, a uh, great opportunity for students to kind of take a de-stress night and relax. Um, our staff offers breakfast, you know, from 9 p.m. until nearly midnight to make sure that, you know, you're still eating some nutritious meals right for your finals. And the great thing about that is breakfast food, even late night, is delicious. Um, as a student or even as a parent who's supporting your student, keep in mind that this will be a stressful time for them between balancing out their final exams, kind of coming to the realization that their first semester is done with, and also students who are just eager to get home for holiday break. You know, so it's a good time for students that as they head home for the break, they're going to start preparing for what their spring semester is going to be coming for them. In January, um, if you, unless you're staying for the 12-month contract where you'll still be on campus, students will be coming back, you know, within the first few weeks of January to start a whole new semester. Um, sometimes students kind of get in this mindset that everyone they meet in their fall semester is who they're going to meet at college, but spring semester brings on a whole new opportunity to meet new students in new classes. Uh, maybe you didn't come in with a major or maybe you decide to change your major after the first semester. You're going to meet a whole new slew of group of students that are in classes that might have your interest. Students that you joined, met in clubs and activities who will be trying to take classes together. So it really is a great new start that we find that students in the spring are really catching a hold of who, you know, how they want to be and who they are in college. We start our semester off with the, you know, our annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day of Service. Once again, this is our fantastic day of getting involved. Um, we volunteer in both Galloway and Atlantic City campuses, and we highly recommend that this is something great to return to campus to and really help make Stockton, you know, make a mark in our community as we do every year. Um, and then, once again, the Get Involved Fair will be held in the spring. So some students kind of join some clubs that they think they might like in the fall and they want to explore more. The Get Involved Fair will be held through the entire academic spine on campus, and it's a great opportunity for students to sign up and see what else is out there. Thank you, James. All right, moving ahead, year ahead. Then as a student, you can find that um, sometimes in February, we'd be able to work out something to make sure that if we have any roommate conflicts, any homesickness, we will work with you to make sure that we are there for you as you're coming out of that winter uh, solstice and making sure that we start to see that we're there for you if you do have any issues. We have a great campus partner over between the Wellness Center for Health and the Counseling Center that we'll be able to connect you with. Um, then starts the housing renewal uh, portion of our year. Now, right now, as a freshman, I see we had a question from a transfer student. We'll give you a little answer about that in a little bit. Um, during the housing renewal process, right now, you're filling in an application where you'll put your preferences. When you go through that housing renewal process, however, right now, currently, those students who live on campus are going through this. What you would do is you'd make your own roommate groups you would form who you want to live with and following our guidelines, then have the opportunity during your set day and time to select the housing you want. 
You don't have to worry about that for a while, but we will guide you through that process as well. Then you have spring break excitement and we have wellness day events. And then we get to April where you start to have class registration, your midterm stores, scores are coming out and you start to see we have late night breakfast events. And then James, if you wanna follow up with uh, May and June and July for our residential students. You're muted there, James. Sorry, had had myself muted. So let me start again. So before you know it, May will be here and your first academic year as a student at Stockton is gonna be done. May brings final exams, which after your experiences at the end of the fall might not be as intimidating as you thought, but it is definitely a high time for students to really prep and plan for finishing up the semester on a great note. Um, a lot of our students, even coming in their freshman year or transferring in, are gonna make a lot of friends who are on their way out, graduating seniors, graduating from grad school. So commencement is a big time of that year as well as the university prepares to give a proper send off to the students that have spent their time with us at the university. Students will get lots of information about moving out of their, their housing, um, especially those in a nine month contract who will be finishing in May. So we'll have details that get sent out to their stocking email address about how to, you know, go through the move out process and make sure that they're leaving their spaces in proper condition. Um, students that are staying either signed up just for the summer or who signed up for a 12 month housing, there'll be details on transitioning to summer housing as well. And across June, July, you know, this, this time of year, some students spend the time at home, some students spend, spend the time on campus with us, and other students, you know, they will be kind of pursuing academics at the same time. But what we hope is that during your summer months that you're enjoying yourself, you had a great first year, and we'll see you again coming for the next, you know, the next beginning in the next fall. If you're on the Stockton University webpage and you type in residential life in the search bar, if you click that link that says residential life, you'll be able to see right here. And on one of these little uh, doodads here, you click here, you can click browse housing options. Now from here, uh, I know we, it was mentioned a little bit earlier, but like, let's say for example, you wanted to see what, uh, I don't know, we'll just, the first one's here, let's go to Atlantic City. Atlantic City virtual tour. You can click right there, give it a second to load up. And then from here, you'd actually be able to do uh, tours of our actual spaces and you'd be able to walk through virtually all of our housing locations. So we definitely suggest you take a look, check that out. All right, um, that'll be able to provide you with literally the best way that you can do it right now to get a, a tour because obviously things are a little bit different, um, but we wanna make sure you have those so that you can see a little bit when you're doing these preferences, what you're actually uh, you know, picking as your preferences, all right? I think at that point, um, our time has come to a close. We want to thank everyone for coming and enjoying residential life. If you have any questions, any concerns, comments that we haven't, weren't able to get to, by all means, please email housing at stocking.edu. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, everybody.